Good day, welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. In this session, we will look at the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapters 1 through 6, to see what Christ says about the believers. The church is a body. And so, as we are going to look at that book, we want to think about some of the things that the Apostle Paul says. One thing he does when he makes an announcement that believing Jews and believing Gentiles are now in Christ Jesus. He also says that they are fellow members of the church, the body of Christ. He also tells us as believers in Christ that at present we are seated in Christ in heavenly places and in the future we will share his glory as head above all things. So we will see from these chapters what does God really say about us. We will see how he positions us. How we are to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that the practices, the things that we do as the scriptures, the word of God shines upon us, our practices now become aligned with the position that God has positioned us in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul also talks about a mystery. It is found in this book, in the book of Ephesians, in these chapters. So in chapter 1, it is called the mystery of God's will. And look forward to the time when all things in heaven and on earth will be added up in Christ. Believing Jews and believing Gentiles will have their share in the glory of that day. The Bible says that they will reign with Christ over the entire universe as his body and his fullness. When we get to chapter 2, he describes the process by which Jews and Gentiles are saved. It is by the grace of God. All both Jews and Gentiles are reconciled to God and to one another. How in union with Christ they become one new man. And how we form a holy temple in which God dwells by his spirit. In chapter 3, he gives us the most complete explanation of the mystery. There is a spoken mystery, the mystery of Christ and the church, meaning Christ is the head of all believers, his body. In this body, Believing Gentiles are fellow years, fellow members, and fellow partakers of God's promise. In chapter 4, we see emphasis placed on the unity of the body and God's plan for its growth and maturity. In chapter 5, the mystery is called Christ and the church. It tells us about the relationship between Christ and the church. It is the pattern for that relationship. He talks now about the believing wife and husband. 
and this is the example by which they should live just like the relationship that Christ has with the believers the church finally in chapter 6 we will see Paul speaking about the mystery of the gospel for which he was now an ambassador but is in chains because he will be imprisoned for preaching the gospel. But when we look at the great impact of what the gospel has on both Jews and Gentiles, especially the Gentiles to whom he was sent, he was happy to be imprisoned because he means no words in trying to tell them that it is by the grace of God through faith that one comes to know Jesus Christ whether they are Gentiles or whether they are Jews. First he wants us to know that the Jews and the Gentiles have equal place, equal rights and equal privileges in Christ as far as our standing is concerned and we Jews Gentiles were both destined to be enthroned with Christ his body his bride sharing the glory of his universal reign another important theme that we will see is love love is expressed through the will and paul is saying to us god wants us to love to love him and to love one another revelation 2 and 4 tells us that when god spoke about the church in ephesus which is these people the ephesians he had something held against them and that is that they had left their first love so we will gleam from the book of ephesians some things that god says we are in chapter one we are called saints we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing, Ephesians 1 and verse 3. The believers was chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blame before him, Ephesians 1 and verse 4. We were destined, determined by God to be adopted as God's son, Ephesians 1 and verse 5. We have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1 and verse 13. When we get to Ephesians chapter 2, it tells us we have been re redeemed, forgiven, and we are recipients of his lavish grace. Ephesians 2 and 5 tells us we have been made alive together with Christ. We have been raised and seated with Christ in heaven, Ephesians 2 and verse 6. It tells us, I am God's workmanship, his handiwork, born anew in Christ to do his work, Ephesians 2 and 10. The believers have direct access to God through the Spirit, Ephesians 2 verse 18. He also tells us uh, that we are fellow citizens uh, with the rest of God's family, Ephesians 2 and verse 19. He also tells us that we are citizens of heaven and that's where we are seated right now with Christ because that's where he is, Ephesians 2 and verse 6. When we get to Ephesians chapter 3, he tells us that we may appear approach God with boldness, freedom, and confidence. Ephesians 3 and verse 12. We get to chapter 4 and he tells us that the saints of God, we are righteous and holy. Ephesians 4 verse 24. So there is a lot that we can glean from what the Apostle Paul says 
about uh, the believers, about Christ, about the church. He even tells us to put on the old armor in chapter 6. And so there is a lot that we can learn from day to day. What does God say about the believer? What is our standing in him? God has placed us to stand in Christ because we have accepted what his son Jesus Christ did, the redemptive work at Calvary. Therefore, we can believe and put our confidence in him and trust that who he says we are, that is who we are. He has chosen us as his people before the foundation of the world. Therefore, we can love him. We can pray to him. We can worship him. We can adore him. We can give him honor and thanksgiving. Because as people of God, he is our creator. Not only our creator, he is our father. Not only is he our father, but Jesus says, listen, we are friends and brother. I am your redeemer. God says, now that Christ redeemed them, they are justified. I see them as if they have never sinned. And he says, now they are united with Christ. Christ in one spirit and he goes on to tell us that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit whose we are we are not our own but we are bought with a price the precious blood of Jesus Christ so believers let us walk in liberty let us walk in love knowing that all this is done for us all because of the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ on the cross and because we have accepted him. We have placed our faith and confidence and have believed in the Son of God that God sent him into the world not to condemn us that we might have eternal life through him. Thank you again for watching and thank you for your continued support.